Hello, everybody. Uh, let's go ahead with another lecture. <clears throat> and we're going to uh, deviate a little bit from limits. And we're going to start talking about continuity. Continuity does uh, is related to limits, but um, it's not going to sort of be the sole idea. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump on into this and what I actually mean by a function being continuous. So a function is continuous if you can draw it without picking up your pencil. And now this obviously isn't a very rigorous or a very mathematical definition, but that's sort of an intuitive way that you can look at a function, you can think that's continuous or not. If I have to lift up my pen or pencil in order to draw the function, then it is not continuous. If something is not continuous, we say discontinuous. That's sort of the mathematical name for it. So if you have to pick up your pencil in order to draw it, that's going to be discontinuous. Now, if we actually look at the mathematical definition of this, there are three things that we need to be satisfied. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that we're only talking about continuity of a function at a particular point. So I'm just looking at one point on the function. And three things have to happen. The function has to be defined at that point. So if I've, if I've got a graph like this, and I've, and I've got my function, and let's say that we're looking at this point x equals c right here. At that point x equals c, I better have the function be defined there, right? I need to have an x value and a y value there. And if I don't have a y value there, maybe there's a hole for some reason. Let me, let me make that look a little more like a hole. Maybe, maybe we've got a hole in the function. The function wouldn't be defined there. And so, um, it would be discontinuous, right? And if you think about this, if I were to draw this with my pencil, I'd have to lift up my pencil right there in order to get to the other side. But if I were to fill that hole in, then I can draw straight through and, we, and we'd be good. Um, so f of c has to be defined. That's our very first thing that we're gonna see. The second thing is that the limit as x approaches c has to exist. And by exist, I mean that it's anything other than infinity or negative infinity or does not exist. So if you get a finite number, if you get seven for that limit, then that's, then that's good. In this case of what I've drawn here where this graph is, this would be fine for this condition. While the function is not defined at x equals c, that obviously precludes it from being continuous. But if I'm just talking about this middle condition here, this right here, yes, the function is not defined there, but the limit exists. As x approaches c from both the left and the right, I get the same value and it's just whatever this y value is. So the limit actually exists because the, because the function is just approaching that point and that's good. Now this third and final condition here is that the limit and the function value have to be the same. So these two things have to be the same. Um, and that's, and we'll, we'll see some examples of this and how each of these can fail. Um, let me say one thing on this second condition. Let me give you an example of where this wouldn't work. If I gave you a function that looked like this, That right there, the function is defined at x equals c. It's defined up here, but the limit does not exist because the left and right limits are different. So this is this is uh, this is what we'll we'll call this a jump discontinuity. We'll see this in a second. But here, the left limit and the right limits are not the same thing, and so that middle condition would fail. So let's go ahead and look. Um, We'll look at some examples of how things can be discontinuous. One, one thing I want to mention before we do that is that this right here is the definition for continuity at a particular point. If we want to talk about an entire function being continuous, we'll say that that function is continuous everywhere so long as it's continuous at every point in its domain. So basically, you have to do these three conditions here and on, on every single point for the function. 
Now, obviously, that might take a long time. There's an infinite number of points on a function. But we can sort of be smart and we can look at, you know, hey, it's going to be continuous here. You know, it's not going to be continuous here. And we can, we can kind, of, kind of cheat a little bit. We'll, we'll get to that once we see some examples. Let's look at some types of discontinuities. So these are ways that a function can be discontinuous. And here, we're going to call this a removable discontinuity. Sometimes you'll hear people call this a hole. And what we've got here is we have a normal function. We've got this normal kind of x squared looking thing. But right here at this point, right there, the function does not exist where you would expect it. The point is actually sort of taken out and moved it. You know, I've moved it up here. And that's, that's fine. I mean, you can do that as far as the function goes. That just means that this function is not continuous. Because if I tried to trace along this function, I would trace along it, I'd trace along. And at this point here, I have to lift my pen, come up here to this point, And then I have to come back down and then keep going. And that's the only way that I can draw this entire function. I have to lift my pencil. So we'll call this a removable discontinuity. You can think to yourself, if it helps, that a discontinuity is, is removable if, with a, if you could fix it with a piece of gum. So if I just had a tiny little piece of gum and I just went boom and I just stuck it right there, I fixed the, the, the discontinuity there. Now I can trace this function out without lifting up my pencil. And so with that little piece of gum, I fix it. That means it's a removable discontinuity or a hole. I'm fine with you calling it either. Let's move on to a jump discontinuity. And I mentioned this before. This is similar to what we saw with the removable discontinuity before. I've got the function defined at one point and it's not defined here. But the problem is, is that even if I took like a piece of gum and I tried to fill it in right here, you know, stick that piece of gum right there, that doesn't work because I've got this entire gap right here. I would need a bridge in order to, you know, to, to connect these. And so if I tried to trace this with my pencil, I would end up here and I'd have to lift it up to get up here. And by that, by lifting it up like that, it, it go, you know, it, we end up having that discontinuity. Um, yeah, I'll actually come back and I'll talk about why this doesn't work with the formal definition of continuity. Let me go to the other examples. We'll see an infinite discontinuity next. And here you've got an asymptote at this x value right here. And so very clearly, I have to pick up my pencil in order to draw the rest of this. Basically to go from the bottom down here, up to the top. I have to pick up my pencil. And so this would be a discontinuity um, because I have, I'm picking up my pencil as I go through this. Another way you can have a discontinuity is due to craziness. We've seen a picture of this graph before. It's just oscillating insanely. And really it's just kind of, no one really knows what's happening inside here. You know, no one actually knows what's going on in this little box right here. And so we would say that this function is discontinuous. Um, now, let me go back through these examples because I, I talked about all those examples with this sort of pencil analogy and hey, can I draw it without picking up my pencil? But now I want to do it looking at these three conditions and seeing if these conditions work. So let me actually copy these conditions down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy and paste these onto every um, every slide and every example that we're seeing there. So I'll copy this over and, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to, every single time we're going to go through and we're going to check these three conditions on, on each of these types of discontinuities. So if we look here, let's look at the first condition, f of c, is that defined? And yeah, if I'm looking at this point right here at x equals c, the function is defined. It's defined sort of in a weird way, but this right here is equal to f of c. So that's okay. We, we actually get, we, we're gonna give that a check mark. That's fine. Let's do a different color. That's fine, that f of c is defined. The limit now, let's go ahead and look at the limit as x approaches c. And if we do that, 
we're going we're gonna to approach from both the left and the right. And you can very clearly see that the function approaches this y value right here. This y value, let's just call that L, that's the limit. So limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to L. And so the limit does exist. This second condition is fine. But now here's where things get bad. Do the limit and the function equal the same thing? And they don't, clearly. I mean, you can see on the y-axis here, I've labeled the limit with L, and I've la labeled f of c right there. And they're clearly just not the same thing. They're different values. And so this right here is where we get that failure. These two, the limit and the function are not the same at that point. So that's why it's a removable discontinuity. A jump discontinuity, let's go ahead again. Let's, let's copy, copy this guy over. Let's go through. F of C, is it defined? And I think it is. I think F of C is defined right here. I've got, I've got that right there. There's my point. Here's C, right? X equals C. The limit existing. Now, this is where we run into some issues. I've got a left and a right-sided limit. My left limit and my right limit, I'm approaching two different points. As I, as I come from the left and the right. And so my left and right sided limits are not the same and therefore that limit does not exist. So this second condition fails. At that point I'm done. I don't even need to check the third condition. If you wanted to, it's very quick. Obviously the limit doesn't even exist. So it can't equal the function value and that just doesn't work. So jump discontinuity, there we go. Let's do an infinite discontinuity. This one's just bad all over the place. F of C, if this is our C value right here that we're looking at, there's not even defined. The function doesn't even exist there at F of C. And so this doesn't work. There's no Y value that's associated with that X equals C. Even more so, the limit. The limit doesn't work, right? The, if I take a left and a right-sided limit, and I, I look as I approach C from the left, I get negative infinity. And as I approach C from the right, I get positive infinity. And so those left and right sided limits are different. And so the limit doesn't even exist. And then obviously we don't even need to check this third condition, but it doesn't work because the limit doesn't exist. The function isn't even defined there. There's no way that they could be equal. And this last one, the craziness, this is just bad all over the place um, because none of this works. The function, I can't even tell you. I mean, I, I'm looking in here. I can't even tell you what the function is. Let's say C is equal to zero, right? So we're looking at that C value. I can't, I can't even tell you what F of C is. So I don't even, I don't even I, maybe I put a question mark here. I don't even know. But th that function is not defined there. The limit, the same thing. You just, you just can't tell with this function. You just can't tell what it is. And there, it, it doesn't exist. There's no way to figure that out. So that doesn't work. And then Obviously, like we've seen, there's no point in really even checking this third condition. The first two didn't even work. The third condition isn't going to work. So those are our examples there of those discontinuities. There's one other type of discontinuity. And here's a question that I always like to ask people. I, I show them this graph and I say, hey, is this continuous at x equals negative 3? And most people go, yeah, that's fine. You know, look at it. It's right there. Boom. There's the point. I can draw this without picking up my pencil, right? I can just trace over this and, and we're good. If, you be, if you're careful though, and you look at this, um, these definitions right here, let's go ahead and copy that over. Oh, there we go. So we've got that right here. If I look at these, if I look at these conditions, let's go ahead and look at, let's, let's go step by step. Is f of negative three defined, right? So, so, so if this is my c, negative three right here, is that defined? And I think it is. It looks to me like, like I've got this point right there. I've got negative three comma zero. So that works. The limit, does that exist? It seems like it does. If you, if you look at it, um, you know, you, you'd probably just say, yeah, as I, as I approach negative three for X, my Y approaches zero. But here's the issue is that for a limit to exist, 
we need the left and right limits to be equal. And while I do have a right-sided limit here, I'm approaching zero, the function doesn't even exist for this left-sided limit. And so the left-sided limit, we'd say it does not exist. And that lends us to, to saying that this second condition fails, and thus the third condition fails. And so a lot of people, while they would presume that this is continuous, it's actually technically discontinuous because those left and right limits are not equal. Now, given that I just said, no, this is not continuous, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really emphasize this, this is discontinuous. Given that I just said this, I'm gonna go back on it, I'm gonna go back on, on, on my word. Most mathematicians, unfortunately, I, th I think it's unfortunate, but that's just my personal opinion. A lot of mathematicians say that in this case, we'll allow this to be continuous if the one-sided limit exists. And so really, we're just going to say, yeah, I just kind of forget about that left-sided limit. I, I don't really care about what's going on over here. We'll just say this is fine. And presumably, you know, like we look at this and yeah, I can draw, draw it without picking up my pencil. The right sided limit exists. That's fine. The function is defined there. Those two values are equal. We kind of just kind of turn our, turn our heads and look the other way as far as that left sided limit goes. So this is an end point discontinuity. It's a little discomforting because technically that left and right sided limits do not match. So by the definition of continuity, you would say no, but most, math, most mathematicians say, hey, if you're dealing with an endpoint discontinuity, you can say, you know, that it works as long as just that one-sided limit works. Um, and so, so, we'll, so we'll go there with that. That's that last example of a discontinuity. Let's go ahead and actually figure out, um, let's look at a function and let's actually figure out if it's continuous or not. And so, most of these questions, you'll have a piecewise function. So let's go ahead and look at this piecewise graph. So when x is smaller than 1, my function is defined as x plus 1, just a good old line. When x is in between and including 1 to 3, my function is a parabola. And when x is bigger than 3, my function is a line, 5 minus x. And so when I look at this, it would be great if I could graph this. We've, we've looked at all these examples of discontinuity, and we've just been looking at graphs and saying, hey, there's a jump discontinuity. Hey, there's an infinite discontinuity. Hey, there's an endpoint discontinuity, and things like that. So it would be awesome if we could graph this. And luckily, these are, these are just lines and parabolas, so I would expect you guys to be able to graph this. Just to save some time, I've already, I already have this graphed myself. We'll see, and actually let me copy this so we can see it side by side. So we've got that right there. You can see that the x plus one when x is less than one, that's me looking I'm going to cover up the part I don't want you to see. That's me looking at the left side of this. That's, that's this whole guy right here. So this part down here, that's that x plus 1. I've got my parabola here in between 1 and 3. And then I've got my 5 minus x when x is bigger than 3. Now, there's some subtleties here that I haven't mentioned yet. And that's these three points right there. Let me, let me call out to these. So that point that point and that point right there. Now, what you can hopefully tell is that if I plug in one into either this line, this x plus one, or if I plug in x equals one into this parabola, I get the same thing in both cases, I get two. And that's how I know that these graphs line up with each other. Over here though, they don't. If I plug in x equals 3 into the parabola, I'm going to get 4 for y. If I plug in x equals 3 into the line 5 minus x, I'm going to get 2 for y. And that's that, while that's 
that's legit and that's you know logical i don't we don't really like it there's not much we can do about it there's a jump here and so that right there is going to tell me immediately that i'm going to have a jump discontinuity so we can look at this and we can say okay where is this thing continuous and where is it not continuous well it looks to me like it's continuous almost everywhere so far but at this point here at x equals three i have to let go and i have to jump this gap and then to get down to the bottom so right here i'm gonna i'm gonna say that there is a jump discontinuity right there and i believe that it's continuous everywhere else the only other point um that you might think that it's not continuous at is here because it kind of is a sharp point you know it comes up to like a v almost that's fine i can still draw this without picking up my pencil if you check those three conditions um, for continuity they'll they'll still work there so we just have this jump discontinuity at x equals three and so that's where it's going to be discontinuous so if i asked you where is it continuous you would say everywhere except for x equals three if i said where is it discontinuous you would just answer with x equals three so this is great we can graph this these are nice simple lines and parabolas we can graph them and we're on our merry way but the but the question here is how do we do this algebraically right let's say that i made these sort of intermediary functions in this piecewise what if i made all of these just really annoying to graph and you didn't want to graph them you know what if they weren't lines and parabolas and what if they were difficult well what you could see here is that when x is less than one i've just got a line and we've seen lines before i mean we can just look over here at this this thing is very clearly continuous everywhere right same thing with this parabola a parabola you I mean you've you've been drawing parabolas for a while now this the parabola is continuous this line is also continuous it doesn't really matter in these regions it's really only at these endpoints that i that i'm concerned about at x equals one and x equals three that's where bad things can happen and so by nature of the fact that i basically just have polynomials here and i know polynomials are nice and they work out well i don't need to bother checking you know x equals zero x equals negative one x equals negative two i don't need to check all those intermediary points i can just look at where i have sort of these jumps you know at x equals one i have a possible shift in the graph i have i you know i have a possible jump discontinuity obviously we know that there's not because we checked that already with the graph but if you hadn't done this graphically you would say to yourself hey look the function switches from this line to this parabola at x equals one so maybe it doesn't maybe it's not continuous there maybe there's a jump and then the same thing goes for three right at when x is equal to three maybe there's a jump and so if we want to do this algebraically what we're going to do is we're going to check those conditions of continuity and really what that boils down to is checking that the limit as x approaches we'll say one of the function is equal to f of one and then likewise you can do the same exact thing for three so i'll just copy this oh i accidentally cut that let's copy this these are the two things that we want to check here. We want to check that the limit at three is equal to f of three, and we want to check that the limit at one is equal to f of one. Now, when I check these limits, I'm going to have to do left and right sided limits for both of them, especially because we're dealing with a piecewise function. And very clearly from this graph, you can see, you know, di there's different behavior on the left and on the right. So I'm going to check left and right sided limits, and I'm going to also check the function value. And I've got this, I've got that written out right there. Let's go ahead and just do this step by step. So I'm going to do this for x equals one first. I'm going to, I'm going to evaluate the left limit. I'm going to evaluate the right limit. I'm going to evaluate f of one, and I'm going to make sure that they're all the same thing. 
And if we do this, if I evaluate the left sided limit, because I'm on the left side of one, I'm in this region here of the piecewise. So I need to look at x plus one, and that's why I've got that x plus one right in here. So then I am doing that left-sided limit. I'm looking at x plus one. I take my one, I do a direct sub in for x, and I get two. Great. If I'm doing the right-sided limit down here, I'm going to recognize that on the right of one, I'm in this region because if I'm to the right of one, I'm a little bit bigger than it. So I'm going to look at this parabola, and then I'm just right here, and I'm gonna do my direct substitution. I'm gonna plug in my one into everywhere that I see an X, and you'll also get two. Last but not least, I'm gonna evaluate F of one, and because I'm looking at F of one, I wanna see this equal sign right here. When X is equal to one, I need to look at the parabola. And so I'm going to plug into the parabola right there. And you notice I'm plugging in one in for X and you're gonna get out two. And that's good. I, I, like, I like that we're getting two, two and two because that tells me that the limit, actually, uh, sorry, let me back up. Let me say this again. Because these are both equal, that means the limit as X approaches one is equal to two. And then also because the function value is equal to two, which is the limit value, then we're just all good. Everything's equal. Our definition of continuity works. Now let's do this for three. So as X approaches three, I'm going to do the same exact concept that I just explained. I'm going to look on the left side of three. So on the left side of three, I'm in this region. I look at my parabola. I do a direct substitution into that, and I'm going to get four out. On the contrary, I'm going to look at the right side of three, which means I'm in this region here, which means I look at this five minus X right there. I do my direct substitution and I get two. And immediately right there, I know that this is not going to be continuous because these left and right limits do not equal each other. There's, there's sort of you know bad stuff going on. So the limit as X approaches three of my function, because the left and right limits are not equal to each other, this is gonna be does not exist right here. And immediately I'm done. I don't have continuity at that point because the limit doesn't even exist. If you felt like it, you could check F of three. You could really prove to yourself that this, this thing is discontinuous. But the moment that you just see that that limit does not exist, we have, we have a discontinuity there. And so we know that it's discontinuous at three. We've done that algebraically. And we, we saw that obviously when we did this with the graph right here. We also saw graphically that it was discontinuous at three. And that's all that I've got on discontinuity. Um, if you're not comfortable with piecewise functions, I would, I, would do some, I would do some practicing of those because a lot of these problems are going to be, a lot of these discontinuity and continuity problems are going to have to do with piecewise functions. So I'll leave you there and uh, we'll see you next time.